Hey folks, I'm uh, going to do a little knife talk, talk a little bit about uh, grinding. If uh, you're interested, uh, you might find uh, something um, that's w worth your time. If you're not interested, well, you know, there's other stuff to do. So I just want to say um, I went to uh, J.C. Campbell, took a course with this uh, uh, sort of a friction folder on what's called a Higo no kami. It's a very common uh, blade in Japan. It's not too common in America. Um, but, you know, because it's just a friction folder. And I used to think it was one of the ugliest knives in the world. Now I think if you do make it custom rather than the factory ones, you can add a little extra beauty to it. And we started out making um, Damascus billets and came up with some uh, embellishment for the steel handle. So. It, it looks kind of neat. It's got uh, some class to it. But uh, Robert Burns was the instructor. He did a very good job. And his uh, assistant instructor, Jesse Bolding, taught me a little bit about uh, blade grinding, which I wanted to pass on. Uh, first thing I want to mention is I usually uh, grind with a jig because most of my grinds are flat grinds. I only do... Uh, some um, hollow grind with if I'm making like a big buoy knife for somebody. Uh, but the um, first uh, jigs I made were uh, a copy of, of Bob Terzuola's book, uh, his book on how to make tactical knives. And he shows uh, something similar to this. Uh, I got some pieces of scrap aluminum, and this one has a um, steel hinge, it was getting kind of rusty. I put this plate on and a bunch of uh, tapped holes to hold the blade. Sometimes I use a C-clamp. Uh, I, I prefer that. Sometimes uh, I use a um, vice grip. But my style is, is to make this hinge like this and to adjust the height here. And to keep it from moving around, uh, I'll put a, like a wing nut here. And, uh, I recessed it here to hold the uh, wing nut that I modified a little bit. And uh, that is, uh, you know, used on small blades for folders. Uh, the other one I made, I was trying to copy his. He has some sort of uh, device in here where he just turns the screw and the screw goes up and down. And he adjusts this point here. And so I made this sort of dovetail sliding thing instead. It's the same idea. This has got uh, what looks like a stainless steel piano hinge. And uh, the same idea, the hinge, and uh, you adjust the height here and you lock it with this wing nut. And I had to grind some uh, bigger blades, so I did the same thing. This is a piece of angle iron. And this is the face that the blade would clamp uh, to. Uh, I've got a center pin that you put on. And I guess you just adjust the blade how you like and, and, and clamp it there and try to reproduce that. So that's the idea. Uh, not as many um, tapped holes as the other one. But that was kind of bulky and I was making some smaller blades. So I came up with this. It's all aluminum. It's got stainless steel uh, piano hinge. The, the same idea you... Uh, this is brass so it doesn't rust. These are stainless and you can adjust the angle by uh, turning that. I got a whole bunch of holes. But the thing I found out was I, I couldn't get the exact uh, position I wanted to get the angle of the blade. So I, I drilled some more holes and it's still kind of difficult. So if I ever make one of these again I think I will make it with some sort of screw adjustment that'll go up and down so you could just put it on a NAS S where you want it. Uh, after I got done, and I had a whole bunch of these because I'm, I'm, I got this class on uh, friction folders I'm teaching and we got to knock these out in four hours and do file work and finish the handle so I was, I was making a whole bunch of these blades. Uh, you're going to end up with something probably looks a little more like this if they want to die it with some file work and all. So. In the meantime, I saw this. Uh, it's a China knockoff version of an expensive uh, grinding jig. And this one's uh, a little bit flimsy, but there's, there's ways to tighten these things up 
uh, wing nut here and all so it'll, so it'll lock. Uh, now this one does have a spring so you're relying on that spring which I didn't think was uh, too reliable but actually that does hold pretty good. The beauty of this thing is that once you lock your blade in that you could grind it and it's going to hold the position because of these slots you turn it around and it goes this way. So I thought that was kind of good. You could lock it in here. So I, I haven't used it. I don't know how good it is. Um, this here, these hinges look like they're plastic. Um, but uh, this one was pretty inexpensive. So I thought that uh, I'd give it a try. Um, I thought about making one, but man, I tell you, I had a couple of days work there, so uh, if you could pick one up cheap, I think you'd try that first. So that's about it. Okay, so what is my amazing discovery? Let me tell you, I've heard this three times in my life. First on the Bob Loveless video, where he shows how he initially starts to grind the blade. Another time, a guy does the same thing who was an excellent blade grinder. And just recently from Jesse. And when I asked Jesse about it and asked him what he means, he says, no, that's totally not what I mean. So I don't know what he means. So that's why you have me to explain things. That's, that's why you're lucky. So anyway, what people say is you, if you've got a piece of steel that you're going to grind, the first thing you do is you set the bevel for the uh, grind of the knife, okay? And then you take it from there. And this never made any sense to me because I tried it and it didn't work. I, I, I generally start grinding the whole thing. You know, if I'm doing a flat grind, I'll start knocking out doing the whole thing. But Jesse said what he does is he follows a shadow and, and and Jesse just started knife making very recently and the guy is excellent so he's one of these guys who's a natural so he just picks it up and does it and you know he probably for that reason can't explain what he does because it just comes naturally but the idea is that he calls this following the shadow and I said what do you mean following the shadow so in other words if you're if you're up on a uh, on a on a flat on a flat plat and you got your belt, you got your knife here, and there's a little shadow here between the blade and the belt, and you could call it a shadow, dark line, whatever. But I think what what happens is that he. So in other words, you, you, you score your blade, you figure out, you know, you do your double uh, scribe marks to figure out where exactly that bevel should go. And then you, you do a, an initial large bevel. And then when you put it up, when you put this up to the belt, you're going to see a little shadow. So in other words, what you're going to do is you're going to just put put that up to the belt. So in other words, if you've got the blade like this and the belt's here, okay, you put it up to that belt flat except you angle it back a little bit so this area right here forms a little shadow. And that way you're going to cut this down. The next time you come back you have the little shadow there you don't grind off this edge. You come down and you keep coming down and you keep looking at it to see where you're going to go. Now I've got a lot of footage of Jesse uh, grinding and we're going to have a look at that. But that is my uh, interpretation and um, I'm going to, next time I have to do a uh, some freehand um, grinding and I guess I better practice uh, I will try that. So, in other words, you you do this initial bevel. Keep in mind, basically, you want to come up pretty close uh, 
to where to where your center marks is. So you know you you, you put you put your two center scribes down here, and this is what you're going to leave when you're when you're done, and then finish up uh, with like some finer belts and all. So you start grinding on this bevel, and you just increase this more and more, but you don't you don't touch this area. You just bring, keep bringing it down, and you just keep looking for that little shadow right here. You don't you don't press the knife against the belt there. You just keep a tiny little slit, and you just keep angling your angling your blade down until you get you know until you get that bevel down where you want, and then and then you quit. So that's, that's a technique.